right hand side is our relatively new river walkway. It's actually a replacement for one that was washed away during the 2011 floods. The one that used to be here was a floating river walk. Well, it used to be quite a Brisbane icon. It became quite infamous during those floods because a 300 metre, 300 tonne section of that walk broke away at the height of the floods and headed downstream at a rapid rate. There was some famous footage of a little tugboat called the Mavis with a Captain Hislop at the helm seen pushing that section of walkway back out into the middle of the river so that it didn't run into the pylons of the gateway bridges downstream. The new walkway is a fixed structure rather than a floating one. Apparently it's a bit more flood proof. About $72 million worth of walkway there on our right hand side. Now if you look past the new walkway over at people's houses on the right hand side, you might be able to see that most of the houses have private pontoons and jetties. Now they were all penned in by the floating walkway when it was there. So there was probably quite a few people that weren't too upset to see the old walkway get washed away. Not everybody wanted a walkway going past their backyards. In fact, the running local joke is perhaps some of the locals crept down at the height of the floods and loosened some of the bolts. The old floating walkway had a section that was supposed to swing away hydraulically to allow access to the pending vessels at people's houses, but it never really worked, adding to the frustration of some of the residents here. I'm sure they'll fix that problem up with the new walkway. In fact, way back there at the start of it, on the right-hand side, they have installed a swinging span. That walkway wasn't the only thing to be washed downstream with those floods, of course. There was hundreds of boats and pontoons and parts of people's houses as well as quite a bit of livestock, including one very lucky cow that made a 90-kilometre trip downstream from a farm in Lowood. It was plucked out down at the mouth of the river. Well, none the worse for wear, really. Also coming up on our right-hand side, there's a lovely sprawling white timber building that's tucked in behind the walkway there. It used to be an old scout den, then it was one of the private school's rowing sheds. It's now somebody's house. Now, the interesting thing about that house is there's no street access. The only access is by a travelator. That's that track running up the hill through the bushes on the left-hand side of the house. It's sort of a tram trolley arrangement. Looking ahead towards the bridge, our city council has recently announced you can hire out the Story Bridge. Four hours will cost you about $50,000, but you do get the whole thing. They divert the traffic. Now, I'm not too sure who would want to do that, but it is available. JD story. It was designed by the same person that designed the Sydney Harbour Bridge, John Bradfield. It was built in the 1930s. It was finished in 1940. Now that was about a year late due to the steel shortages of the Second World War. It was built at a time where Brisbane really didn't need a bridge of that magnitude for any traffic problems that existed. Another reason it was built was to try to jolt the economy out of the grips of an economic depression. Now, though, the population growth in southeast Queensland and its associated traffic problems are growing at such a rapid rate. Well, it's several years ago now, but they've finished constructing a cross river tunnel. That tunnel runs fairly close to where the bridge is now, but about 60 metres beneath the bottom of the river. And this bridge, just like its big brother in Sydney, has a company that does adventure bridge climbs. That's where, for a fee, you can pay to walk across the top of the structure. Now we're just passing one of the deeper points in the river, it's about 22 metres beneath Neptune right here. It's actually a fairly good fishing spot. There are still plenty of fish in the river. We sometimes see little prawn trawlers working up to this reach. And it's also where we see most of those bull sharks jump, just in the corner here on our right hand side. Now you've got to be looking at the right spot at the right time, now it's over in a blink. But it's certainly not a new thing, even when they were constructing this bridge, so way back in the 1930s, it's on record. A lot of the workers here, so a lot of shark activity in this particular part of the river. It's a bit of a sandy beach over there on our left hand side underneath the bridge. That's the point of the suburb Kangaroo Point in the late 1800s. A lot of that was blasted and dredged away just to allow better access to ships up to this reach. Because right up until about 1940, all along the right hand side, well aside from being Brisbane's central business district, is also one of its major port precincts. 
little hard to imagine now, but wharves and warehouses line the whole reach with some fairly large ships tied up alongside. There's a few photographs of this era in your maps, also one of the bridge under construction. is a lovely old customs house building it was built in the 1880s now that was a real boom time for brisbane in fact you hear that decade come up a lot in our history it would have stood proudly the hub of all this port activity going on and for the first 11 or 12 years of its life it would have collected queensland's own tax and duty that was prior to federation after the 1940s for the size Thank you. 